Hello, and welcome back to Perk Industries. Yes, Perk. It's been a long, long time. Um, at the end of uh, March, um, as part of uh, our sort of worldwide pandemic issue, I, uh, I fell a bit ill. Uh, I did so for about two weeks and uh, I've sort of documented that in some uh, other videos that you've uh, probably seen on YouTube. You might have seen, might not have. Um, but over the course of getting better and getting well, um, beyond the sort of lucid dreams, um, I've had a lot of time, which has been really, really nice to get stuck into not just some writing of music, not just messing around with uh, making things, but actually writing some music. Uh, and I've put plenty of that out, but as well as that, um, I've had some really good inspiration for things to get sort of stuck into making and, uh, and, and things to sort of build. And, and one that came around uh, to probably to me about early June uh, came from uh, a very good friend. Um, and as always, there's a backstory. So um, uh, my friend Spencer is uh, also known as the Petting Zoo and is a fantastic uh, uh, local artist from around here, but is... Uh, particularly um, adept at uh, the art of screen printing and in our house where we live me and my wife have a collection of his artwork that adorns our walls and um, yeah an old friend you know suggested to me uh, via Twitter um, a project that he'd seen and that project was something else I, I'd never even considered anything along these lines and and I just want to show you uh, what that is and and where that sort of that sort of led me down the rabbit hole with this so take the notion of um, a turntable uh, something that rotates something that you might put a uh, a needle on top of and play a record if you were feeling um, uh, really hip-hop you might scratch that record um, but never before have I really considered how you might use a turntable to control CV or control voltage and how that might work in terms of talking to other either module electronics or um, beyond that other kind of circuit bent objects and that really sort of set a light bulb off above my head. Um, Spencer showed me um, the website of a guy called Lomond Campbell. And as you can hopefully see, Lomond Campbell has developed this concept design for turning his turntable um, into a trigger device that then responds to his uh, outboard Eurorack modules. It's quite a simple um, add-on sort of retro-engineered device that um, sort of marries up against his turntable. And this device contains four different uh, reed switches which respond to magnets. Uh, those reed switches then uh, are wired into our, an Arduino circuit. And that Arduino circuit then, um, in response to the, the triggers that are the magnets, um, pumps out five volts to the different outputs that can then be switched on or off according to the preference. On the turntable, instead of a record, is a metal plate with a sort of paper layer that outlines um, the patterns for uh, potential rhythms that you can use uh, with magnets. Uh, those magnets are tiny powerful ones that you can buy and you simply just pop them into position on that metal sheet on top where you'd like them to go. And as the turntable rotates, the sensors and the reed switches pick up those uh, the, 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 the magnetic uh, sort of field and cause the reed switches to close, triggering whatever you, you would like. The really cool bit about this is that you can then completely control the, the speed, the BPM of the record going round with, you know, with a normal turntable, you'd have sort of 33 and 45 uh, speeds. Uh, with some older turntables, you can go down to 16 or even right up to 78. Um, so straight away I thought about how I might sort of modify um, Lowe and Campbell's design and sort of uh, bring it up to sort of how we would do in Perk. Um, and that was to think about adding a, um, a rotary switch for power that would be akin to the type of thing you might have for a light dimmer switch. Um, and also... To, uh, rather than sort of have a separate, um, uh, you know, uh, like, like Loam's design here has got a uh, sort of wooden plinth that sort of marries up against the turntable. I wanted to build mine into it. So the turntable would actually still function as a turntable, but also 
would also you know take on board the the sort of cv idea as an internal part of the workings of the turntable so that was something else i wanted to add to sort of my variation on the design too uh, it's taken some time it literally has taken pretty much the whole of june and july to work with this and uh, to put it together there was one in weekend in particular where most of the building uh, took place uh, but i had a few issues with getting things like each sensor each on and off switch each led and each cv output to all match up together uh, in my first build i'd i'd had you know sort of switches that didn't match the output that didn't match the led so uh, there was a fair amount of fault finding to get this working but actually it's not the most difficult build to do um turntables yeah whilst they're very popular there are still loads that you can get your hands on for little or, or next to no money you know cherry shop car boot sale you can pick up a turntable for next to nothing um and in terms of you know finding interesting ways to sequence modular kit um, this is really intuitive. Um, I'd recently picked up a Korg SQ1 as a sequencer, but actually I think I'd rather have this turntable provide that with um, its clock pulse. Um, and also, not just working with modular, but getting these outputs, these CV outputs, to trigger other things. So for example, um, my friend, silly little man, recently gifted me this humongous drum pad machine, which um, I am going to modify and for each drum pad I am going to wire in a, a mini jack that then can be triggered by the turntable uh, CV kit. Um, in addition to that we've already tried this as a concept so I know it works. This drum pad machine is one that came from a charity shop kids toy £2.50 but soldered on um, a USB power supply just 5 volts to get it up and running and then for each of the drum pads we put on uh, inputs that are in parallel with these switches so behind each pad here there is a piezo um, and wide in parallel with that is access to each switch with the thinking being that every time the uh, turntable CV synth pulses a signal it then pulses that to complete the switch for each of those and in turn allows um, sort of rhythmic patterns to be put together and um, yeah it then brings you know to mind a sort of whole opportunity of any kind of circuit bent instrument being able to be uh, you know controlled and sequenced as such by the turntable so if you think about yeah how the the design for um, the the plate the metal plate is is put together it's it's possible to think about deconstructing drum brakes and then reinterpreting them using that sort of mat system um, and I've seen examples before of uh, different methods of taking drum brakes and making them cyclic breaking them down to a sort of rotary pulse of uh, a waveform where you would have a kick a snare and hi-hats littered around and the cool thing here is there's four different sensors there's four different triggers so it makes perfect sense to be able to build, build up drum beats in this fashion um, so yeah it's it's a really exciting build I just feel that with this one there is uh, there's lots of opportunity to do a range of things with it um, in uh, Loman's video you see that he's got some cracking things going on in terms of his uh, sequ sequential use of uh, the the euro rack modules that he's got pl plugged in and being someone who's only just getting into euro rack you know you, you've seen videos that i've done because you know it's not a cheap world to get into but uh you've seen the car boot euro rack that we've worked with here that is something that would certainly be um you know apparent in in terms of a, a possible use for the turntable synth um so Really, there's some photographs of the build that um, we'll go through and I'll show you and try and explain a little bit about uh, how we built it. In addition to that, um, then obviously there's going to be some tests. So hopefully you'll see it up and running with uh, the kids drum machine. Uh, and we'll also show it in use with uh, the Korg SQ-1, the uh, Coma Electronic Field Kits and any other sort of uh, CV related um, devices that we've got knocking around we'll try and sort of wire them all in together and do a couple of pieces with them uh, but the opportunity to mix not just modular and uh, but also to add circuit bent um, artifacts as well really does make this quite an exciting sort of proposition in terms of, of something that can be used um, to, to create rhythms to uh, trigger and to sequence and 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 be it in a non-linear way be it in a in a sort of rotary way it lends itself well to the idea of loops so maybe it might trigger for example uh, a sampler via midi which is something that we can look at 
if uh, wired through the Korg sequencer. It's just got so many opportunities. So as you can probably tell, I'm quite excited about this one. Um, we'll show you the build and then you'll uh, see a couple of experiments we did with it um, in order to sort of test out its capabilities. So yeah, hope you enjoy. So when it came to choosing a turntable, um, I opted for uh, an old faithful. The Technics SLB2 uh, is a turntable I first had uh, when I first went to university. I remember giving it to uh, a friend, bandmate at the time, and since found another one and replaced it. Um, in terms of a uh, consumable record player that would uh, be alright to sacrifice, I felt it was uh, yeah, a, a good uh, option. Um, when you look at it, it looks very similar to, you know, sort of modern day Technics uh, turntable. Uh, looking at the front there in the image, you can see that it has uh, speed adjustment as well as a variable pitch uh, dial. So you can actually dial in uh, a little bit quicker or slower for 33 and 45. Uh, normal sort of turntable arm. It's belt driven, uh, so it, uh, it is a little bit slower to power up and power down. But I felt that wasn't too important for the sort of uh, the crux of, uh, of what this was about. Uh, and has a slip mat on top as well. So that was the, the, the model I chose. Um, initially, I thought that the main sort of plinth of this turntable was made from uh, a timber of some sort, uh, maybe with veneer on, but it's actually sort of molded plastic. So in terms of drilling it, it was quite straightforward to do. Um, the circuit itself, uh, you should see here, is uh, has Arduino at the heart of it. It is an Arduino Nano. Um, these you can buy uh, from Arduino Online. There are other alternatives. You can buy uh, cheap Chinese knockoffs of the Nano and use those, but be wary setting them up and using them in terms of downloading is uh, a potential uh, pain. So be wary of that if you go for a non Arduino branded Nano. Um, the rest of the components are all relatively straightforward. You'll see the reed switches uh, towards the top uh, in the center, um, and that is what is responding to the uh, magnets. They're protected uh, to earth via some uh, resistors. Top right is the jack outs, so that's where the CV signal is sent. Each has a um, uh, single pole, sing uh, uh, no, single pole, no, double pole, single throw switch. <laughs> and uh, that switch allows you to switch it on and off as uh, per your choosing and also output from the arduino is to uh, an array of four leds that indicate power going to the matching output um, when i built this my main issue as i said earlier was that it was uh, hard to sync together the reed switch with the led with the switch with the with the connector that was the hardest part i think i had with the build that just required a, a bit of uh, rejigging about I think if I show you a pictorial view of this, um, the most important thing I think is to make sure that you have got cable to spare when you're putting this together. This is a useful view in terms of what things actually look like in the real world. Um, and one of the issues I had was not having enough wire uh, to move around switches, LEDs and the uh, jack connectors. So just make sure you've got enough cable running on the inside of your turntable to do this. So that was the circuit all put together. The easiest bit was this. Uh, this is the template that uh, is provided uh, on the website and quite simply download the PDF, print this off and then affix it to a piece of magnetic metal. Uh, I opted with a, uh, a confectionery tin, a quality street tin, other tins are available. Uh, went down to B&Q, bought myself some uh, tin snips um, I bought the ones with a slight car, uh, concave in the, the cutting direction so that I could cut the, uh, the, the kind of angle that I needed and I sort of curve all the way around. Uh, it was pretty easy once I had the right tool to do. Then I double-sided taped this on, as much double-sided tape as I could get around it and just attached it straight on. Uh, it seemed to sit quite well, but um, I think if you wanted to invest in something a bit more superior, maybe get something thicker than a millimeter, maybe go with sort of two millimeters so that it doesn't flex and, and sort of warp uh, into a different shape, which my tin kind of does a bit. Um, moving on, I had a coup when I went to buy my tin snips at B&Q. Um, I found this strange uh, shape, uh, this kind of extruded metal uh, tap 
fixture. Uh, this was in the bargain bin for £2 and ended up being absolutely perfect. As I said, I wanted this design to be uh, completely in-house in the turntable, so it was set up completely to read uh, in this fashion. Uh, this tap fixture it was just the right length. Well, I say just the right length. I cut a bit off the end of the main length in order to use the, the sort of threaded section where you can see the wires are coming out there to uh, basically use that as a, as a thread into the body of the turntable to hold itself upright. At the other end, I actually put a little uh, felt uh, pad so that the top of this arm could rest on the center of the turntable, keeping a nice sort of bridge um, across where the sensors are. Uh, this picture also highlights probably the trickiest part of the build, and that was taking these reed switches, which are those black cylinders, um, drilling them, which you can see I butchered a little tiny bit there with uh, my uh, hand drill, um, but actually feeding the wire back through the arm around that 90 degree corner was really difficult, required some te uh, tweezers in order to, to pull that out and through. But I think you'll agree the chrome looks looks uh, you know looks pretty good, doesn't it? Um, in terms of that arm coming across. And um, the other good thing about this approach is it still leaves the normal turntable arm free to operate as usual. So with the um, the uh, the mask that we would use to hold the magnets in position, you could actually put that over the top overlaid over a normal record and still play a normal record as well as uh, RCV magnet trigger. So that works as well. Uh, moving on, this is uh, the arm in situ, so with it drilled in, fixed into position, and this is the turntable uh, with, without the main plates taken off there, um, and you can see sort of how it how it sort of fits there and tries not to sort of interfere too much with the uh, the normal turntable arm. Uh, here you can see it with the the, the sort of platter back on top, um, and you know put into situ with the belt back attached. This next photo here is when we opened up the bottom. And one of the first things I was really happy to see was in that bottom left corner, you can see that aside from some of the speed controls there, there is a big, big space where there is room to put in additional components. So I was really happy to see that. And again, surprised to see that it was made from molded plastic. Um, other things to be uh, wary of here, watch out top right corner, that is the main transformer where 240 volts comes into the circuit. I tried to stay clear of that with any of my modifications. Um, uh, I'm not keen on 240 volts, not mad keen on death, so I've uh, tried to stay well away from any of that main sort of power transformer or even actually any, any sort of uh, step down in voltages, just staying well clear of that stuff um, in this sort of view from the underside. Uh, when I looked at this, I realized that it was probably best to put the controls, connections, LED switches, as you would see it there on that left-hand sort of uh, void where there's a space. And at the bottom there, there was also another space. I wanted to put the Arduino out the way uh, from any other sort of power supplies. So that's the sort of plan for, for the layout of what happens next. Um, Here's another view from the top again, and this time you can see how I sort of started to lay out some of the major sort of fittings. Um, the drill holes on the right hand side uh, show that the sort of small ones are for the, the jack out connectors. I opted for some quite large uh, push switches to go in that sort of central uh, row of holes. And then uh, the other hole on the left there is for the uh, the dimmer switch, which I bought as well. I bought a couple of just normal domestic light dimmer switches, uh, deconstructed it from the, the, the lighting fascia that you'd normally have in the home, and that then became uh, the mount for that. What you can't see in that picture is where we added um, four LED holes as well in parallel with those other holes down that sort of far right-hand strip. So at that point, I hadn't worked out where they were going to go, but uh, afterwards figured that was probably the best place so that it all matches up. Uh, so here you can see the sort of putting together of uh, where the connections were in that row along the left-hand side, bottom left, then the switches, and then that unit in black there is the dimmer switch unit. Um, inside there are sort of some structural ribs to the inside of this uh, this plastic casing. Uh, just a craft knife, I could cut that away so that each of the components could sit flush and you can probably see where uh, I, I whipped the Stanley knife out and chopped a few of those, those sections out that we didn't need. So with those in place, it then became sort of apparent that it was time to think about wiring all these things together. And I've strung a lot of uh, sort of cable between each of the main sort of parts of the 
there in that photograph you can see I'm doing each of the the switches to uh, the wires uh, and that's sort of in readiness for then adding this part which is uh, just a piece of Vera board which you can see at the bottom in the middle there and that piece of Vera board contains uh, the Arduino Nano um, or the or yeah I'm using a, a sort of cheapy repro copy version um, and also at this point you can see the addition of the LEDs and everything pretty much wired together there um, one of my big issues with this design was that uh, you know the Arduino will run off 5 volts normal USB sort of power supply uh, I was tempted um, to think about finding a sort of step down voltage reg or some kind of method of patching out of the turntables power supply to the nano um, with my health and safety hat on I decided that probably wasn't a good idea and opted instead to just run a separate uh, power supply just some an old phone um, adapter which spat out 5 volts and just ran that in parallel out of the case uh, so basically the turntable has two power supplies one for the Arduino circuit one to power the rest of the turntable uh, the final part really was then just to secure this in place put any sort of insulating tape down around uh, any exposed contacts and just try and run the wire as much out of the way of any other connections as possible and out through uh, where the other cables for the turntable went so uh, at this point there's the turntable from the top you can see the arm in situ it's got the uh, switches there and the connectors there the LEDs aren't in that photograph neither is the dimmer switch but that's pretty much uh, the shape there and you can see on the left side there that's the uh, the image from the PDF to, to, to be manufactured into the, the plate to hold the magnets on as a nice sort of arty close-up of, uh, of of how that sort of worked out in the end with uh, a normal sort of stylus. Uh, the Vestac styluses are nice. There are other styluses available, um, but, but yeah, that one works quite well in that system. So that's pretty much the build, except there are a few other things to bear in mind. There was some Arduino code. Now, um, if you go to the website, uh, the aforementioned website from earlier, you'll be able to find the code there which you can download. If you're interested in seeing that code, here it is. Um, but download the code. Um, you'll need to put it into your um, Arduino host, whether you do that on the online version or in the downloaded software version. Um, and you will need to import that into the or download that into your Arduino Nano in order to make things work. Just be wary of you know when you when you're testing this. As I said, I keep saying this. Make sure that your LEDs, your switches, and your jack connectors all match. Otherwise, it's a it's a bit of a, a fault finding minefield trying to make sure that this all works. So um, at that point, I think it is uh, time to see what it can do. <laughs> 